I mean, there is nothing I can't do to make this not look terrible. We're just gonna have to deal with it. I have been trying to film this video for, by this point, well over a year. And there's always some kind of excuse that I find to put it off, whether that's not planning what I'm gonna say enough, or the lighting, or whatever, and I've kind of realised that if I don't just force myself to sit down and do it now, then I'm never going to do it. Because the only reason I'm doing any of this is to maybe, hopefully, help someone who is also in a similar situation to me, either now or me when I was younger or whatever. And I'm terrified and I don't like doing this, but I feel like there's not much out there for teenagers and especially adults with selective mutism, especially severe selective mutism like I have. So I want to make videos. I want to try and dispel some of the misinformation that's out there about this because even a lot of people who are working in mental health don't understand what causes it or why you can't speak. And I feel like there needs to be more people with lived experience, especially later in their life, talking about it to spread awareness and education. And if this video, this channel can help even one person, that will make all of it this worth it. So I have selected me to some and I have had it since I was, I guess, sort of my whole life, but also most noticeably since I was five years old. And I am now 25, so I have been like this for two decades of my life. I guess one of the main reasons that I wanted to try and talk about it. There's this idea a lot of people have that's like to me to some only affects children. And it's something that you'll just grow out of when you become a teenager or an adult. And for some people that's true. But for other people, especially if you don't receive proper mental health care and treatment for it, it doesn't it's not an illness that is specific just to children. And I think the idea that it is is incredibly harmful and it makes it much harder to access help. Selective so mutism is an anxiety disorder and it's named after its most noticeable symptom, which is a inability to speak in certain situations. It's not a choice not to speak, it is a physical thing. Like, no matter how badly you want to, you can't. And what those situations that you can't speak in are is obviously something that's going to vary wildly from person to person. Like all mental illnesses, selective mutism is very individual in how it affects different people. But in my case, it means that I cannot speak to anyone outside of my immediate family and it's been that severe since I was about 10, 11 years old. When I was a bit younger um, I could still speak like a little bit, especially to friends, but um, but as I got older because of things that were happening in my life, um, trauma mainly, I just lost the ability to speak at all to anyone who is not my parent or my sibling. It's also not just speaking that it affects, it's kind of any form of communication. So it can be speaking, but it can also be uh, writing things down for people to read. It can be body language is a big one that I don't think a lot of people realise. You become like so physically frozen by fear. It can be not wanting people to know the kind of interests that you have. It can be just anything that could result in being judged because that's what selective mutism is that I don't think people without lived experience understand is it's not a fear of speaking. People mischaracterise it as that so often and it's absolutely not the case, or at least in my experience and the experiences of other people that I've seen. It's not even the speaking that causes the fear as much as the being heard by other people. Like, I can talk now because I'm alone in the house, or the thought of other people watching this video is absolutely terrifying. And that's why, for probably closer to two years now, I've been trying to do this, and every time I panic at the last minute because the thought of other people watching a video of me speaking is absolutely horrific. But if I wasn't doing that, if I was just at home alone, I could talk fine because there'd be no one here to listen. But more than a fear of being heard, it's a fear of being judged. And that, I think, is what people don't understand, is selective mutism is this intense phobia that other people will judge you. If you speak, they'll judge the things you say, or the tone of your voice, or the way you say it, or the words you use. And usually it's something that does come from experience. It's a fear that if you talk to other people, they will judge you, and because of that they will reject you. And I think that's why selective mutism is much more common in people, and especially children who are neurodiverse, because if you're a child and you're autistic or something, you will have experienced that. You will have experienced 
being rejected for just existing as yourself. So this can develop as a sort of defence mechanism against that. And it's not nice to live with, it's not something that anyone would choose, but selective mutism is not a choice. And that's something that I think is really important to emphasise because selective mutism is not choosing not to speak. Selective mutism is a physical inability. I have tried so hard to speak for so many years and it's not enough to want to speak. It's not enough to try because it is so much more than that. It is so much deeper than that. Selective mutism is very specifically caused by anxiety and fear rather than being non-verbal, which could be caused by being neurodiverse or some other disability that impairs your ability to verbally communicate. And that's why someone who's non-verbal may still be able to communicate in other ways, whether that's through like text-to-speech or whatever, because it's not caused by the fear of being heard and the fear of being judged. Selective mutism is about far, far more than just not being able to speak. And I really wish that there was more of an understanding and awareness of that amongst people in general, but especially people in the mental health field, professionals who should know these things, but even when they're specialists often don't because there's such a lack of education. And I think a lot of that is because most sources about selective mutism are not created by people with lived experience. And therefore it's never going to be accurate because you can't understand what this is like unless you've lived it. And I'm sure that is something that's beginning to change. And I'm sure there probably is now more awareness and knowledge than there was when I was a child unable to speak, but I don't know. And I, I think it's still a long way off what it should be. And that's a big part of the reason why I decided I wanted to start talking about my own experiences and trying to spread education on what it's like to have selective mutism, especially as an adult, because I think a lot of information about selective mutism talks about it in children and you'd be forgiven for thinking that it's something that only affects young children. Like, it doesn't. There are so many teenagers and adults in the world who have selective mutism, but we're never represented in information about it. We're treated as though we're the exception. And oftentimes the reason why we're still like this is because we never received the treatment we needed when we were younger. And that's not going to change unless the way that we talk about selective mutism changes and unless people start listening to people with lived experience. So that's why I want to do this. Because it's not as though no one with selective mutism has ever tried to talk about it online. You know, I'm not going to pretend that I'm in any way unique, but I think there isn't as much information and content about it as there should be. And I'm hoping that I can, in some small way, contribute to changing that. I mean, I'm absolutely not an expert, but I've lived like this for over 20 years and I would like to make content educating people who don't have it, but also I want to really make videos to hopefully help people who do live with selective mutism or other similar conditions. I would like to, at the very least, help other adults and teenagers living like this to, to see that they're not the only one, because it can be such an isolating illness to live with. And, you know, for me, most of the people I thought were my friends abandoned me very quickly when my selective mutism became more total. And it's not easy to make friends when you're like this. And it can be so easy to feel like you're the only person in the world who experiences that paralysis when you're in certain situations. It can be so easy to feel like no one could ever understand and like there's no hope because that's how I felt most of my life. And to be honest, I still find myself feeling like it now sometimes. So I would like to make videos to show that things can get better and there is hope because you can get better. Although I've been like this for 20 years now, I have been making progress and it's been slow, obviously. It's been two decades, but um, I have been starting to heal. I mean, even just being able to film this is substantial progress, so that's something. But I have begun to be able to talk more in front of other people, still not much, and still only like one or two very specific people, but it's progress, and it's progress that I hadn't made a few years ago. Um, and I can talk to people online now, which is something that I could do briefly as a teenager, and then 
completely lost the ability to again and I've managed to make some really lovely friends but I still have a long long way to go in terms of healing and recovering and learning to speak and I'm very aware that I will probably never be able to speak like a quote-unquote normal person and I don't want to say I'm fine with that because I'm not I would love to be normal and be able to just have conversations with people that would be great uh but unfortunately realistically that may never happen but I am determined to get as better as I can be which may not be fully better but it will be better than I am now and I would kind of like to document some of that progress here to maybe offer some kind of help or advice to people who are also going through that process and I feel like there's maybe not as much content online about that kind of thing as there should be so uh, I want to do my bit to try and uh, remedy that even though my videos are all going to look terrible for probably a while and I'm going to be incredibly awkward on camera because again I cannot speak <laughs> and therefore even to a camera I don't know how to do this I don't know what I'm doing help but I'm really hoping that by doing this even if I can just help one person even if I make like a hundred videos and I only help one person once it's it would still be worth it for me to know that I've helped other people who are going through a similar thing to me for me it wasn't just not being able to speak it also led to me being almost completely housebound for oof, 10 years probably um from the age of 10 11 up until two or three years ago um i didn't go out <laughs> i couldn't go to many places i couldn't go anywhere that was busy i couldn't go really to anywhere that wasn't like an outdoor place where there were barely any people around like i couldn't even buy things for myself i couldn't go into a shop that was too much just being around other people being outside being exposed and that's something that's changed a lot in the last few years i can go for meals out now and i can go to the cinema and to the theater and go out and do things even in busy places and that's massive like five years ago i could not have done that and that's only something that started in the last few years and that's something that i'm really hoping to keep doing like i've had so many experiences now that i never could have had in the past and I really am so excited for what the future holds as I continue to go through this process of healing and learning how to live again because it's been a long time and uh, it's fun and it's terrifying and overwhelming but also very worth it and I suppose this is part of that journey for me but really all this video is just to firstly prove to myself that I can do this um, and I guess also to serve as some kind of introduction to me, my channel, what I'm hoping to do. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't know anything, clearly. <laughs> I'm sure there's like a million things that the second I stop filming, I'm going to remember that I wanted to say that I've just completely forgotten about now. But um, if you can hear that noise, that's my dog. He's woken up. I have a lot of ideas of things and topics that I would like to make videos about both like slightly mutism related and more general mental health related and also just completely other stuff so hopefully this isn't going to be the only time that I do this uh because that would be underwhelming and disappointing but if you watching this have any ideas of that was my rings I'm sorry of things that you'd like me to maybe talk about or whatever then please tell me leave a comment the only reason that I'm doing this really is just to try and help someone anyone so um if anyone has like specific ideas of things that would be beneficial that they would like to see then um i would love to create them if i can oh this video is such a mess it's gonna be such a pain to edit and i hate looking at my face and i hate listening to my own voice but i hope this video will go some way to trying to explain what i want to do here and why i feel like i've rambled for ages and barely said anything of any consequence or worth but to be honest I kind of feel like I just need to get a first video done to prove to myself that I can do this 
I feel like it would be easier to film videos when I have more of a specific topic that I know I want to talk about, which I don't today, and I, I think especially for the first video, I just needed to do something. I feel like it's better to have an awful mess of a video up than to just never get around to making anything. And hopefully once this is done I'll feel more able to make more videos and videos that are actually good and worth watching because frankly this one isn't and if you've watched till the end I really hope that you found some kind of value in this video because otherwise I feel like I've just wasted a lot of your time but genuinely if anyone has actually watched this video at all especially if they've watched this far um thank you <laughs> I can't really understand anyone wanting to look at me or listen to me for this long however long this video was when I've finished with it but I hope that you found some kind of value in this video even if that's just laughing at me because I'm awful. And again if there is anything specific that you would like videos on please leave a comment if you feel able to and tell me because I would absolutely love to make stuff that I know is going to be helpful or at least I know is more likely to be helpful than if I'm just randomly pulling video ideas out my ass. So <laughs> thank you again and I realise I should do the youtube -y things of telling you to subscribe and like but I don't want to do that so I'm not going to um, and instead I'm just going to say bye